A marriage planned between Mataran de l'Esperance and Lucy Broadhurst on the horizon is disrupted as attempts to clean the tainted L'Esperance name from its bestial reputation are thwarted by the true reality of an erotic scandal uncovered via sexual lucid dreaming. This is Valerian Barovchek's The Beast, an erotic reimagining of Beauty and the Beast, a film so scandalous that it was previously banned for 26 years within the UK. A heavily cut edition of the film only just narrowly avoids prosecution under the Obscene Publications Act by the Director of Public Prosecutions at a time when such a heavily cut film was screened in 1978 at the Prince Charles Cinema with approval from the Greater London Council. A film steeped in controversies for its intense graphic depictions of sex between noble woman and beast. Valerian Borovchek is no stranger to scandal and uses this film to also mock and criticise the Catholic Church's own past of covering up scandals. It's ironic that a film about uncovering hidden controversies was previously heavily cut, censored and banned. Throughout Borovchek's The Beast, scandals are hidden only to be gradually revealed. Mataron's arm cast covers a bestial paw, revealing he lived with the curse of the beast associated with the L'Esperance name, a name with a negative reputation due to such legend, the reputation attempting to be cleaned through a marriage and the donation of a bell to the church. Out of the public eye, a priest is very handsy with his young male assistants. The killing of the Duc de Ballo, Ramon de Lure, by his brother Pierre de l'Esperance is shoddily covered up, the Duke's body hidden underneath a stack of library books. Cardinals arrive at the home amidst the discovery of Mataron as the beast, with the intention to cover up the shocking revelation. Borovchek, throughout the beast, is set around and mocking attempts to hide scandals, especially in relation to the Catholic Church's own controversies regarding allegations of abuse towards minors. A disturbing detail, once revealed in The Beast, is hastily covered up. The Beast is making clear criticism of how certain organisations, religious and class-based, those with wealth and power, will attempt to hide their controversies and how such controversies should eventually become uncovered. At its centre, at its very core, The Beast is a biting criticism of using power to cover one's horrific actions. While specifically flashing its claws at organised religion, the Beast's criticism of hidden scandals can also extend to other forms of corrupted power, from the hiding of sexual assault allegations, which the Me Too movement aimed to highlight, to the horrific actions of the Metropolitan Police officers, such as Wayne Cousins, using his role as a police officer to lure and murder Sarah Everard. While the Beast is satiric, comedic and absurd, its critical nature holds an immense weight that is more more universal than initial viewings may suggest. It is a film criticising corrupt power, and due to its own experience with censorship being banned and heavily cut, there is a delicious irony in a film criticising the hiding of scandal, therefore being hidden away itself for its own scandals. Valerian Borovchek's The Beast certainly is scandalous, likely even able to shock and disturb audiences today despite its age. The Beast portrays sexuality and lust as primal, animalistic urges from the very beginning with its graphic depiction of two horses breeding. The act of sex is natural and yet it can shock. Borovchek's intense close-ups of these graphic moments is very confrontational, almost an attempt to desensitise the viewer for the erotic scenes that will gradually follow. Legends of humans and animals copulating, the tale of a noble woman ravaged by a beast, it's incredibly taboo and challenges traditional values of sex. As suggested by the Cardinal during the film's conclusion, for human and beast to become intimate together is one of the greatest sins. Valerian Borovchek therefore violates this sin with a grin. As Matara and Lucy sleep, they seem to meet within a lucid dream. Lucy as the Lady Romilda de l'Esperance and Mataron as the Beast. The legend was established earlier, with Romilda's corset discovered at the bottom of the pond, covered in monstrous claw marks, and the dream is almost a confirmation of the legend. Mataron is indeed the Beast, and aroused by Romilda's noble presence, intends to defile her. The dream sequences between Romilda and the Beast are incredibly graphic, challenging the boundary between art and pornography, the explicit scenes influencing Lucy's action as she explores her body in a state neither awake nor fully asleep. 
As Mataron and Lucy's marriage is on the horizon, the dream is almost a gesture of physically giving oneself to the partner they intend to dedicate their life to. Remilda's initial reluctance and fright of the beast running away from its clutches isn't dissimilar to cold feet at the altar, bypassed eventually by succumbing to the beast's sexual whims, giving herself to taboo temptation. These sequences are absurd and ridiculous, yet it's difficult not to gawk at the graphic nature of these scenes, to speculate on the thoughts that were running through the minds of those who had to design and create these costumes and effects. Like an innocent runaway lamb caught by the hungry maw of the beast, Romilda is now within his clutches. It serves as a roleplay, a fantasy that Lucy imagines herself as the noblewoman ready to be conquered by something primal and animalistic within the man she is intending to marry. With the intermingling of dreamworld fantasy eroticism and real life unconscious sexual expression, the seeds of doubt are sown as to whether the legend of the beast is in fact real, only confirmed once it is discovered that Mataron has died in his heavy, vivid sleep, and that his cast and clothing have hidden a beast's tail and paw. With the scandal uncovered, the L'Esperance name ruined, and a sexual taboo based within religious sin, Valerian Barovchek's The Beast concludes on a blasphemous and offensive high. In conclusion, Valerian Barovchek's The Beast is a dark fantasy, erotic and satiric retelling of the classic Beauty and the Beast fairy tale. It is laced with criticism primarily at the Catholic Church's reputation for hiding away uncomfortable scandals, which can extend to other forms of modern day scandal, while also being drenched in taboo eroticism that confronts and challenges the viewer's perception of the sexual fantasies of dreams and the horrors of reality. A challenging film that is likely to still offend, unsettle and amuse viewers today, just as much as it shocked viewers in the 1970s, The Beast is a one-of-a-kind primal film that revels in ethical and sexual grotesquerie. A special thank you to my super Patreon supporter Jackie Peterson.